Hi guys, AWS Storage Gateway definitely comes up on the exam. It's been around a while, but I didn't cover it before because it's definitely very difficult to show in a lab environment. But what I wanted to do instead is to just give you some diagrams and some slides and talk through what Gateway is because you just need a high level understanding of Storage Gateway and the three different types of Storage Gateway so that you know when you get exam questions, which type of storage gateway you should be using or whether you should be using a storage gateway at all. So the first one is a file gateway. So with a file gateway, the storage gateway here is actually an appliance. This is a virtual appliance running on VMware or Hyper-V within the corporate data center. So an on-premises environment and your servers on-premise or your application servers or your clients or whatever, are connecting to the storage gateway using either the network file system protocol, NFS, or the server message block, SMB. So one of those two file level protocols. Now the data can then be stored in multiple storage classes in the AWS cloud. So either S3 standard, standard infrequently accessed, or one zone infrequently accessed. Files are stored as objects in S3, but they're presented as file systems within the storage gateway. Now, a local cache can provide low latency access to recently used data. So you hit the cache first, see if the data's in the cache. If not, then the data is gonna be stored in S3. So the bulk of your data is stored in S3. Just a cache of the data is stored locally for low latency access. So key things to remember, this is file level. It's SMB or NFS, and the data is stored in S3, but it's cached locally for a subset of the data, the recently used data. Now, remember, this is a virtual gateway, so it runs on Hyper-V or VMware. It can also run in EC2. So File Gateway provides a virtual on-premises file server, enabling you to store and retrieve files as objects in S3. It can be used for on-premises applications and for EC2 resident applications that need file storage in S3 for object-based workloads. It's used for flat files only, they're stored directly on S3. File Gateway offers SMB or NFS-based access to data in S3 with local caching. And it supports those three different tiers of, or classes of S3 storage. So S3 standard, standard IA, or one zone IA. It also supports Linux clients connecting to the gateway using NFS versions three and four, and Windows clients connecting to the gateway using SMB vers versions two and three. Maximum file size of an individual file is five terabytes. That's the S3 limit. We then have the volume gateway. So this is the second type. So you have the file gateway, this is the volume gateway, and next we're gonna cover the tape gateway. So this is the second type of storage gateway. And there are two different configurations and I'm showing both of them on the screen here. So the top one is what we call cached volume mode. And then we have stored volume mode. Now, firstly, the key difference is this is block level. So we're talking about iSCSI. We're not talking about SMB protocol or NFS protocol here. This is attaching essentially a disk to your server using iSCSI. So it's block level protocol. Now in the cached volume mode, the entire data set is stored in S3 and a cache is stored locally. So I've highlighted the keyword here. This is uh, hopefully a, a way of remembering this more easily. Just remember that we're talking about on-premises here, that the cache is on-premises. So in cached mode, the cache is on-premises, everything else is in S3. Whereas in stored volume mode, the data set is stored on-premises. So the data is all stored here and then it's actually backed up as snapshots to S3. So you're using S3 in this configuration as a backup, but your data is local. Whereas in this case, you're using S3 as a place to store your data, and you just wanna be able to cache some data for you know, recently used data for low latency access. So that's the volume gateway. So volume gateway represents the family gateways that supports block-based volumes, it was previously referred to as gateway cached and gate gateway stored volumes. I think that terminology was probably a bit more confusing. I prefer the new terminology. So it's block storage, iSCSI based. 
cache volume mode, the entire data set is stored on S3 and a cache is accessed locally on site. In stored volume mode, the entire data set is stored on site and asynchronously backed up to S3 as EBS point in time snapshots, which are incremental and compressed as always. Each volume gateway can support up to 32 volumes. In cache mode, each volume can be up to 32 terabytes for a maximum of a petabyte. I don't think you need to know those specific numbers, but in case you do. And in stored mode, each volume can be up to 16 terabytes for a maximum of 512 terabytes per data gateway. Lastly, we then have the tape gateway. So in this case, it's about having your backup servers on premise. They might be running something like Commvault or NetBackup or whatever, Veeam, you know, one of your one of the typical well-known backup software and you're backing up to a virtual tape library, so a virtual tape. So AWS Storage Gateway presents that to you. The backup server can use one of many common backup applications. Now, when you're actually writing data to the tape, so the tape is mounted, the data actually goes to S3 standard. And then when you eject your tape, the data is then stored in S3 Glacier and Glacier Deep Archive. So very cost effectively. Again, it's iSCSI, so it's an iSCSI connection to the VTL library. So this is used with popular backup software. Each gateway is pre-configured with a media changer and tape drives supported by NetBackup, Backup Exec, Veeam, and so on. You can select one of different, these different tape sizes. It can have up to 1500 virtual tapes and a maximum aggregate capacity of one petabyte. All data transferred between the gateway and storage gateway is encrypted using SSL, and all data stored by tape gateway in S3 is encrypted server-side with Amazon S3 managed encryption keys, SSE S3. Now those last two points about the encryption, they apply to all different types of gateway. So it's always encrypted using SSL in transfer into AWS, and it's always encrypted at rest with Amazon S3 managed encryption keys. So that's it for Storage Gateway. Those are probably all the facts you need to know for the exam. So just make sure you understand the different types of gateway and when they're gonna be used.